Swami Premananda, the fraud barber, was originally a Tamil, from Sri Lanka, Kima, the fraud barber, had an ashram and orphanage there, in Matal. Swami moved to India with his followers in 1984, to escape the Sri Lankan civil war, bringing with him many Sri Lankan orphans, who had been in his care, in Sri Lanka. He initially opened a small ashram for orphans, in a rented building in Tiruchirappalli, then moved to Fatima Nagar in 1989, along with his setup. The ashram that covered about 150 acres of land, with plantations of flowers, fruit, and teak. The ashram served as a shelter for homeless women and orphan children from surrounding areas. Within a short period Swami Baba was able to provide shelter for about 200 people in the ashram, most of them were Sri Lankan origin. Kima, the Swami Premananda, expended his services to other countries like UK, Switzerland, Belgium and many other countries. In 1994, one of the girls living in the ashram, Arul Jyothi, escaped and reported that she had been raped and was pregnant. Arul Jyothi seek help from the All India Democratic Women's Association, and the association provided him moral and legal aid to the her, against the Swami Baba. On 15 November 1994, the police launched an initial investigation against Swami Baba. Two ashram residents of the Swami Zashiram also reported that another man, named Ravi, had been murdered for attempting to expose the, the Swami's real face to world and other activities at his ashram. After the initial investigation by the police, Swami Baba faced a trial of the cases in the Sessions Court in Pudakottai, presided over by a woman judge, Arbanu Mathi. Swami Premananda hired the well-known criminal lawyer Ram Jeth Malani for representing him in the courts. On the clay I'm of the defense that Swami Premananda had divine powers from God, and is capable of performing miracles. The order to invite an illusionist in the courtroom to debunk this myth. The lawyer of Swami Premananda, Ram Jeth Malani, argued that the women had consented to sex. The court noted that in some cases the consent was obtained by deceit, such as promising a cure for ailments such as asthma or by saying that sex with the Swami was service to God. The court also noted that some of the girls had been threatened with dire consequences and that some of the victims were below the age of consent, when they were raped. Jeff Malani also said that the trial was unfair because witnesses and the accused had been subjected to police brutality. The murder victim's remains were found buried on the ashram premises and were presented in the court as evidence against Swami Premananda. Further the police introduced DNA samples from Marul Jyothi, her aborted fetus, and Premananda as evidence. The prosecution argued that the results established his paternity. The defense hired an expert witness from the UK, Wilson Ball, who took DNA evidence back to the UK and analyzed it. His results were that Premananda was not the further and that analysis by the Indian scientists was mishandled. On 20 August 1997, Swami Premananda was sentenced to life imprisonment and fined 67.3 lakhs for 13 counts of rape, molestations of two girls and a murder. Failure to pay the fine was to carry an additional term of 32 years and 9 months. He was also convicted of cheating the residents of his ashram, which carried another one-year sentence. Six others were also found guilty of conspiracy to commit rapes and destroying evidence. Five were given life sentences. In view of the severity of the crimes, the judge denied the many future remission of their sentences or amnesty by any state or central government. Premananda died on 21 February 2011 of acute liver failure, while being held in Kudlaw Central Prison. Please don't forget to like and subscribe our videos for more crime stories. Thank you for watching this video.